Hi, this is Phil Hester. I'm a writer and artist, and I'm probably in your comic book collection, whether you want me to be there or not. And you're listening to Splash Pages. Splash Pages. Excelsior! Hey, everybody. I'm Drew with Splash Pages, and I have someone who I was dying to meet at the con, uh, artist extraordinaire, Phil Hester. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? Good morning. How are you? Everyone is so polite. So I'm just going to go with, I'm doing fine. Thank you so much, Mr. H. So uh, among my research, I found out that uh, in between some of your comic work, you were looking for do stuff. So you knew people who worked at WB Animation. This is around like when Batman and Superman were there. And uh, the great Butch uh, Luvik, yes. uh, who, who is one of the directors. Uh, and, director. Yeah, right. He tried to get you as a boarder, so you, and you got some work working on Superman, Batman. You also did work on uh, Rusty, uh, Big Guy and Rusty, the boy robot, and Men in Black. So what was that like? It was kind of a whirlwind year because I had just come off like kind of a, a weird experience at, at Kitchen Sink. I was drawing books for Kitchen Sink, the right. Crow book. Right. And they kind of went through kind of a weird reorganization at the time. And, and so I was like found myself without comics work for like the first time in like 10 years. Wow. And Warner Brothers was so eager to find uh, storyboarders that had action experience because at that point, the animation industry was so dominated by humor. So all the storyboarders were humor storyboarders. So they actually put an ad in the CBG wow. uh, for the Comic Spires Guide for the young people. Yeah. I don't know. And it was like comic book artists try storyboarding. And I did not even send storyboards in. I sent in issues of this book right here called The Wretch. Okay. I just sent in a couple issues of that and said, this is what my storytelling is like. And they hired me. And I mean, I was, and they let me stay in Iowa. I didn't have to go to LA to do it, which sort of hindered my storyboarding career a little bit. Right. But I got a couple of scenes with Batman. I got a scene on Superman. And then it was at the tail end of both of those shows. Right. And then, uh, you know, Butch was nice enough to, you know, spread my name out to other uh, studios. And I got to do some stuff for, uh, like you said, for Men in Black and for Big Guy and Rusty, which was a nightmare to board. Because Jeff's designs are so intricate. Right. And they wanted you to stay on model cool. and the boards. And it was like maybe three, it took three times as long to board that, that show as any other show. Yeah, I've seen those drawings, and I, I can only imagine your 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 pain, sir. Yeah. I mean, they're beautiful, but they're they're hard to draw like a hundred times a day. Absolutely. I mean, I've been binging Men in Black, so I I, I just keep like, and then especially I heard, it, I was like, can I can I tell is that him? And I'm just like, no, the style is just so uniquely '90s. So another thing is that we have to address is that you've worked with a lot of greats. You've worked yeah. with Brian Michael Bendis. You've worked with Grant Morrison. I think. You work with Mark Miller, who I just learned how to say his name probably. It's not Millar, everyone. Miller, yeah. yeah, it's Miller. So you've worked with them. You work with Brad Meltzer. You work now with Kevin Smith as well. And so you were the you know the green the green arrow artist for most of Kevin's run. And in some ways, you were like an introduction to some people. So what's that like? Because in the in the interview I read. Neil Adams was your guy. So some people are like, you're their Neil Adams. What's that like? Yeah, I feel bad for those people. <laughs> because, um, you know, Neil's like an art god. Right. Uh, but it's sort of like, you know, it's sort of like who's your Doctor Who or who's your James Bond. It's right. sort of your first. Right. And uh, I was lucky that a lot of people picked up that book. And it's sort of, it not, only, um, not only did I introduce a lot of people to Green Arrow, but that book introduced me to the mainstream superhero audience because up to that point, I'd been doing mostly indie stuff right. and uh, and I'd done a run Swamp Thing, uh, so so I was kind of a vertigo tweener, you know, not quite a not quite a alt comics guy and not quite a superhero guy, right? And so Green Arrow kind of you know like put me in front of those people, which uh, I'm grateful for. But yeah, I did all of Kevin's run, and then I did all of Brad Melter's run, and a good chunk of Judd Winnick's run as well. And yeah. it was a great experience, and all those guys became friends. Absolutely. I mean, and then I have to ask, because we talked about it when I met you yesterday, um, one of my favorites that you and Kevin did was Onomatopoeia, yeah. uh, who is just one of my favorite weird villains, because he doesn't talk. He, he talks in sound effects, and he's committed to 
destroying, killing, um, you know, all, yeah, heroes yeah. that are, don't have superpowers. And I remember uh, when I was trying to dress as the character, just the design is so distinct, yeah. but it's also like so simple. Yeah. And it was just crazy. And, and I, if I'm correct, and we talked about this, you, we kind of got a bit of his first appearance in Superman and Lois, but not really. Yeah. I saw. I, I heard about it, and I'm trying to catch up on that show, so I haven't seen the episode yet. No spoilers. Yeah, but um, it's it's kind of amazing to see it having the second that character having his second life, and you see that all the time. Sometimes you create a character, and it's a toss off character. Well, not I don't want to say toss off, right. but you don't know it's going to be a major character. Sure. And they wind up on TV t- 20 years later. Um, but Onomatopoeia was a uh, a special character, and that design largely goes to Kevin. I mean, oh. Kevin described exactly what he wanted with that, and we just drew it, and uh, it, it came out the way he wanted. Absolutely. I mean, I, I love it because I just don't say anything, and someone, you know, <laughs> I'm just like, wow, I am such a jerk. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much, Mr. Hester, for, for having us. Everybody, Phil Hester, I really check him out. I I. I feel like I would waste another five minutes telling you all his work. It's all great. So, And he's probably one of the nicest people I've ever met at a con. So just props. He's so polite. He'll shake your hand and everything. So keep stay tuned. Uh, we got more coming. Splash pages.